Hey, Math 30 2s. Today we're going to look at the first lesson in rational expressions and equations of non permissible values. All right, so rational expressions. Previous course we learned that the rational ratio or quotient of two integers is a rational number. Numbers 1 half, negative 5 thirds, and 10 fifteenths are all examples of rational numbers. The ratio or quotient of two polynomials is called a rational expression. So the expression is x plus 7 over x plus 8, x minus 3 over x squared plus 1, and 7 over 2y plus 5 are examples of rational expressions. One of the keys to success in operating with rational expressions in this unit lies in the ability to factor using greatest common factoring and differences of squares. So let's do a quick review. <clears throat> Write the following expressions in fully factored form. So we always want to look for a greatest common factor every time you're asked to factor something. So we're asked to factor 8x minus 24. Well, both these terms have a common factor of 8. We divide both terms by 8, and we get x minus 3. You know you factor correctly if you expand this out and you get back what you started with. So if I were to go to 8 times x, I get 8x, and 8 times negative 3 is a minus 24. In part b, a common factor numerical common factor would be the number 2, but there's also a variable common factor. The common factor of x cubed and x to the first is x to the first. So now we divide both terms by 2x, and we get 5x squared, and 2x divided by 2x is 1, so 5x squared plus 1. We look at part c, x squared minus 16. This is a difference of squares. Both terms are perfect squares, and there's a subtraction sign in between, so we call that a difference of squares. If you recall how to factor a difference of squares, you must make your two sets of brackets. Take the square of the first term, so the square root of x squared is x, and put that in the front of each bracket. Take the square root of 16, which is 4, put that in the back of each bracket, and make them conjugate binomials. It means one's positive and one's negative. And if you expand out x plus 4 times x minus 4, you're going to get the difference of squares, x squared minus 16. Part D. <coughs> Step one is to look for common factors. So I notice x cubed and x have a common factor of x. Divide both terms by x, and we get x squared minus 1. x divided by x is 1, so negative x divided by x is minus 1. And now I have to look further because I notice x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares. Both terms have perfect square roots. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 is 1. Make them conjugates, 1 positive, 1 negative, and we're done factoring. So you have to remember how to factor. All right? Next step, investigating non-permissible values. Let's consider the rational expression 6 divided by x. What's the value of the expression when x is 2? Well, we simply go 6 divided by 2, or 3. Why can the value of the expression not be calculated when x is 0? Well, if we try it, if we go 6 divided by 0, we know anything divided by 0 is undefined. If you try it in your calculator, it will tell you that's an error. We cannot divide by 0. So consider the rational expression 6 over x, 10x over x plus 3, 8 over x minus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 3 over x times x minus 2. Complete the table below. Write the value as not defined if the value can't be calculated, or in other words, when the denominator is 0. So anytime you have a denominator of 0, it can't be calculated. So let's have a look. A value of x is 3. Let's do the all of 6 over x. So 6 over 3 gives us 2. x is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. When x is 1, 6 divided by 1 is 6. When x is 0, 6 divided by 0 is undefined. All right? Not defined. 6 divided by negative 1 is negative 6. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3, and 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Very good. Let's look at 10x over x plus 3. Let's substitute 3 in for x. 10 times x, or 10 times 3, is 30, over 3 plus 3, which is 6. 30 divided by 6 is 5. 10 times 2 over 2 plus 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 10 times 1 over 1 plus 3, 10 divided by 4 is a fraction in lowest terms as 5 halves. 10 times 0 is 0 over 0 plus 3 is 3. 
0 divided by 3 is calculatable. That's a 0. 10 times negative 1 over negative 1 plus 3, which is negative 5. 10 times negative 2 over negative 2 plus 3, well, that's negative 20. And 10 times negative 3 over negative 3 plus 3, which is 0, well, that's undefined. All right. So I've done the first two. I'd like you to pause this recording and do the next two columns, complete them on your own, and see if you got them right. Then you can restart it. So if you complete the last two columns, that's what it should look like. We'll read about the ones that are not defined. So we notice that we have a denominator of 0, we get undefined, and a denominator of 0 here, we get undefined. In the last column, denominator of 0 and denominator of 0. All right. We only had one undefined in the first, in the, sorry, in the, that column, only one undefined in this column. Okay. Last two columns, we had two situations when the term was undefined, when that denominator became 0. All right. Complete the table below using the result in B. Values of x for which the expression is not defined. So we circle them up above. Uh, when 6 over x is undefined, that occurs when x is 0. 10x over x plus 3 occurred when x was negative 3. 8 over x minus 1 times x plus 2. We had undefined values when x was 1 or negative 2. And here when x was 0 or positive 2. All right. Part D. Part D says, the result, use the results in C to make a connection between the rational expression and the values of the variable for which the rational expression is not defined. So the rational expression is not defined. for a value or values of the variable which make the denominator zero. State the value or values of the variable for which the following rational expressions are not defined. So we're talking about defining rational expressions, or when they're not defined. We're only looking at the denominator. All right, so we're not even worried about the numerator, just the denominator. So I take my denominator and say, when does x minus 6 equal 0? We can't have the denominator equal 0, so when does that occur? That's a pretty simple equation to solve. So if I add 6 to both sides, that occurs when x equals 6. So state the value of the variable when this rational expression is not defined. That value is x equals 6. So when x equals 6, this expression is undefined. Over in part 2, again, we're just looking at the denominators. We happen to have two factors in this denominator. So I look at both factors, and I'm going to say x plus 5 could equal 0, or x minus 9 could equal 0. It doesn't matter which factor. And now those are pretty simple equations to solve. The first one, I'm going to minus 5 from both sides and I get x equals negative 5. The second one, I'm going to add 9 to both sides, so x equals 9. Those are the values of the variable which make the second expression undefined. We get a denominator of 0 when that happens. So, big star, values of the variable that result in rational expressions not being defined are called non-permissible values. In other words, we can't have x equals 6 in part 1 of E, because then we get a denominator of 0, which means we can't divide by 0. We get an undefined expression. So in parts E1, the non principal value for this rational expression is 6. For part E2, the non principal values of this rational expression were negative 5 and positive 9. All right. So we solved those up above. Values of the variables that result in the value of the rational expression not being defined are also referred to as restrictions on the variable. So we can call them non-permissible values 
or we can call them restrictions on the variable. Right? The variable can't be those values. It's not permissible. Or we can restrict the variable by, by saying we can't have that value for the variable. So the restrictions would be x cannot equal 6 and x cannot equal negative 5 or positive 9. Those are restrictions. Right? So this should have been minus 5 and plus 9 are often written in a combined, combined form. So note, non-permissible values of a rational expression are determined by solving an equation where the denominator of the rational expression is equal to zero. Often, often factoring is required to determine this non-permissible value. All right, so you have to know how to factor, and then we're going to set the factors equal to zero to find the non-permissible values. So step one in example of two Consider this rational expression. Determine the non-permissible values of this expression. Well, in order to do that, I have to factor the denominator. So let's keep the numerator as it is, and we're just going to change the way the denominator looks. So I'm going to take out the common factor of 5x. If I divide both terms by 5x, I get x minus 1. So 5x squared minus 5x is the same as 5x times x minus 1. If I'm looking for non-permissible values, then we are going to say my denominator 5x can't equal 0 and x minus 1 can't equal 0. And we're going to solve those two very simple equations. Right? So I divide both sides by 5. 0 divided by 5 is 0. I add 1 to both sides. x equals 1. So there are non-permissible values. Now it wants, them, wants us to state them as restrictions on the variable. So to restrict the variable, we're just going to write it a little bit different. We're going to say x cannot equal 0 or 1. So two different ways to do it, non-permissible values or restrictions. It's really the same thing. It's just a little different notation. All right. Look at the next page, example 3. Determine the non-permissible values in each of the following rational expressions. Again, step one, we should factor that denominator. So I show you have the expression 2x minus 4 all over. I'm going to factor out a negative 2, and I get x plus 2. Now, if I'm going to find non-permissible values, I don't worry about non-variable factors in my denominator. So I'm not going to worry about the minus 2 in my denominator. I'm just going to look at that denominator that has a variable in it x plus 2, and that value can't equal 0. So when does that occur? Well, that occurs when x equals negative 2, and minus 2 from both sides. So that's the non-permissible value for the first expression. Number 2, again, let's factor that denominator. So I've got 12p, <coughs> excuse me, over, factor out a p, I'm left with 4p minus 1. Well, now both those factors are variables. So I'm going to let one variable equal 0, one factor with a variable, and the other factor with a variable equal 0. So p can equal 0, or 4p minus 1 can equal 0. Well, p equals 0 is already one non permissible value. That's all you have to do with that. Let's solve the other equation. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So p can also not equal 1 quarter. So when p equals 1 quarter, we get 0 in my denominator. Not good. All right. If I look at number 3, negative 5 over a squared minus 49, you know, let's factor that denominator. I've got negative 5 over. That's a difference of squares. So that factors as a plus 7, a minus 7. And now I set each factor equal to 0 to find my non-permissible values. So a plus 7 could equal 0, or a minus 7 could equal 0. If either of those two things happen, I have a 0 in my denominator, and this expression is undefined. So here I'm going to minus 7 from both sides. Here I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So my two non-permissible values are negative 7 and positive 7. And the last one, if I simplify this expression, my numerator stays the same. I factor my denominator. Take out a common factor of 2. That leaves me x squared plus 4. I go ahead and look at my denominator. Only one variable factor. So I say, when is x squared plus 4 equal to 0? 
So I minus 4 from both sides, and I take the square root. Remember, any time you take the square root, you should include the positive and negative. So plus and minus the square root of negative 4. Those are my non-permissible values. Well, you can't have the square root of a negative number, not in the real number system. So there are no non-permissible values, all right? So we would say for part 4, there are none. No non-permissible values. All right, x can equal anything. Part B, state the restrictions of the variable in each of the above. So for part one, my restriction should be x cannot equal negative two. For part two, the restrictions, x cannot equal zero or one quarter. For part three, x, no, I'm wrong. We didn't have x's in part two, those were p's. And in part three, we haven't got x's, we've got the variable a. So a cannot equal plus or minus 7. All right. Example 4. In each case, write a rational expression with the given variable and non-permissible value or values. The variable is x, and the non-permissible value is 3. So again, my numerator can be almost anything I want. My denominator has to have a variable of x in it, and it should be non-permissible value of 3. So x minus 3 has to be in my denominator. That would be the simple, one of the simplest ones you could do, and you get all sorts of different forms of that, right? Um, variable of a non-principal values of 0 and 4. So this one I might say a over a times a minus 4. So non-principal value of 0 and a non-principal value of 4 satisfied. Okay. Part C, a variable is P, and the non permissible value is one-third. So that's a little bit different with the non permissible value. That's a fraction. So now I might want to say, let's work backwards with this one. We know that if P equals one-third, my denominator is zero. So let's multiply both sides by P, or sorry, by three, and then minus one. Three P minus one equals zero. Well, that's what my denominator should be then. 3p minus 1, all right? And the numerator can be anything you can think of. You can have the variable p in it, or it cannot. It can be positive or negative. But that expression right there has a non-permissible value of 1 third. All right. So you guys have your self-evaluations. The questions you should do from 1 to 12 are listed. Away you go.